Jack, in the last segment, I asked you, how do you deal with the hyper carry? Yep. Well, it turns out Ziggs is the answer to that. It's Why? one of the answers. It's this strange thing, trying to figure it out. We were even talking about this before the day, because uh, we were referencing TSM's like, hyper carry thing that had Wild Turtle, where everyone that got close to him was just pushed around like this rocket that Wild Turtle was commanding. Uh, yet everything that goes in and creating that is a fairly squishy guy that can shield a single target. And when other teams were weak to the hyper carry strat, it's like these individual guys that go in and die again and again. But they're all this death ball as far as trying to move around. And if you just throw a bunch of bombs into the death ball and hit five people at a time, it falls apart really fast. Obviously, if they would have played a little bit better, it still could have worked if they would have spread out and done all those things. But the Ziggs play was on point. Yeah, I think uh, people's initial reaction when they see a hyper carry is we have to kill that person, mm -hmm. right? So normally the, the, the instinct is, okay, go after that person, put all your damage into killing the Tristana. Well, the team is literally built for that. You know, yeah. we're going to, yes, go after our Tristana. We'll just shield them up and live through it. Instead, they adapted and they went for everyone else who is not... Yeah wasn't we concerned have this, with prote protecting themselves. You have this that. strange mental thing that goes on when you're just like, they're going to target Trist. Let's all go help him. <laughs> yeah. And then you all group <laughs> up and get hit by Ziggs. But yeah, that really was only a small part of how they're able to finish the game so quickly because there was still a lot of control throughout. Mm -hmm. Curse Academy, though, they got ahead early. Yes. Right? And so this is it. Last game, they had to come from behind with that hyper carry and, and win. But this time they got ahead early, so we're going to actually pull up a replay here about 14 minutes in. 3 for 0 in the bot lane, just to kind of see how they got themselves set up with a fairly substantial gold lead. Yeah, and let's just start rolling this clip. You can see a teleport down right away from Lulu, and Chris puts himself in a whole world of trouble right off the bat, but it's because they were getting catches onto the people they wanted to on teammate and really just kind of baiting them all over the map. You can see how much confidence Curse Academy was playing with here. Impactful knew he had a zillion ult. He knew he had Lulu and Ori behind him. So he was free to jump in. And the respect that teammate was giving them was huge because A, Slushy wasn't there. So they had no AoE. When he does come in, he gets taken down really quickly. And it looked like Curse Academy in complete control. Well, and that's a, that's a very good example of the Trist comp, again, mm -hmm. working the way it's supposed to. They were all they, spread out that Yeah, time. they were all spread out. He had the, sh even though he was low health, he kept getting shielded back up. So there was never that moment where a uh, teammate could really go in for the kill. And we only saw two kills there, but the, the third one came Faded. through when, yeah, when Nocturne yeah. saw that low health Trist, went for it. Uh, Trist had the ult, picked up a third kill. So now they're ahead, right? Yes. And I guess the, the next question is, Again, why couldn't they close it out? What, you know, what happened? Yeah, well, we have that next replay where the game completely turned. As Irene even mentioned it, that both of these games turned during mid-game teamfights. And honestly, when the other team gained a little bit of overconfidence and went one step too far. If we can actually pull that clip up uh, right now, because this was St. Vicious really getting arrogant here. Let's just roll this play a little bit, because he had his flash up this entire time. He could have flashed over the wall, but he thought they were so strong that he was just going to walk out and save his flash and maybe even bait in another fight. Now, remember at this point, his ultimate is down, so extra shielding is gone from them. They do not have Lulu for the extra shielding as well, and they, as you can see, are funneling in to an incredibly small ball, and they get blown up by the Ziggzalt. Fantastic bubble by Dodo8, and very quick change of aggression in mind by teammate. Like, that's the type of team that teammate is. They will go in, even when they've been losing the whole game, if they see the right opportunity. They couldn't get Baron because they didn't have the damage there to do it, but it, the damage was done at that point. They'd gained their confidence back, and Curse Academy lost the momentum. So it was the overconfidence, uh, perhaps arrogance, on the side of Curse Academy, because we saw St. Vicious get out. He chose to re-engage, so yeah. although he didn't blow his flash to get out, he didn't need to, he could have just left at that point. Mm -hmm. So that points to them being pretty bloodthirsty. The final thing I want to talk about going into the next game, now that we're evened up, both teams have had comeback wins. Yeah. Both teams have shown some aggression, sometimes over-aggression. Is this the, the point in the series where it's time to take a deep breath and it's, just, you know, play your own game, slow it down, and, and make sure you do things correctly and methodically when you do have that early lead? I think there's a big chance we see a much more subdued game from these guys. They have both just played two games on the stage. They both kind of messed around with leads. They've been having nice comebacks. The picks and bans were remarkably similar from games one and two, so I don't actually think we're going to see too many adjustments coming from both these guys. They've had winnable games on both sides because the games that weren't really winnable, they ended up losing because we've seen two comebacks. I don't think we're going to see huge adjustments in picks and bans, maybe a little bit less aggression. All right, well, we'll see if that gameplay changes after we take another quick break. And when we return, it's game three between Curse Academy and Team 8. Don't go anywhere. Call of 
commander there, taking a kill. Trades one back though, now in on the reset. Down he goes, Slushy knocked into the wall. But they oh, go to the bomb. Field. The ulti comes in, but he will go the wrong guy. And Keen could go down, makes him gigantic, and the battle has begun. Saint gets revived, but oh. then the first coming in. Chris is down. Great shockwave, one kill picked up. This could be really bad for teammate. Keen tries to get away, good flash. Oh, they go bulky. back on the bunny. Fubu, who did not see that coming.